Hello, my name is Tina. I'm head of design of Victoria Designs and especially for the Alice in Wonderland fans amongst you, we have another crafting kit for you, the Wonderland Adventures Crafting Printables Kit. And now something very special. This kit has new Alice in Wonderland illustrations in it, made exclusively for Victoria Designs in the style of Sir John Tenniel himself. For example, I really wondered what the caterpillar looked like on the front when he's sitting on his mushroom. And here's the answer. And we mix these new illustrations with the original ones from Sir John Tenniel. The beautiful original illustrations are widely known, but these new ones you won't find anywhere else. In this kit you will find 24 printable journal pages in three sizes, 20 full papers, design papers and 15 sheets with embellishments. In this video Paul will show you how to craft from scratch the beautiful crafts that he made with these printables. We're talking about a magazine holder that also holds beautiful albums and a mini perpetual album as well. Paul has a very inspiring YouTube channel, Paper Crafting with Paul, where you can find a bunch more of these album tutorials and card tutorials and more. If you like the tutorial that you see now, definitely go check out this channel as well, because wow, do that, links below. And if you would like to make all the crafts from this tutorial as well with the principles of our Wonderland Adventures kit, you can find more information below as well. And now I'm giving the word to Paul, enjoy crafting. Hi everyone and welcome to my tutorial for Vectoria Designs. So in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make the main project. So the main project is a magazine folio box like you use to hold your magazines but I've made two of them so they slide on top of each other and you can see how it's got that magazine folio or magazine holder shape to it and then I'll also show you then how to make a photo album so when you make two of them you can stack both of them into the box so i'll show you how to make just this repeating page and use the journal pages to decorate and make tuck spots and photo wallets some more places to hide things oh let me take it out again place it back in there Another one here. So I'll show you how to make a little mini album as well. So I decorated both mine the same, but it gives you a chance to use more of your papers from the kit because there is lots in the kit. And also giving you extra opportunities to decorate it your way and personalize it. And then after this main project, I may even show you how to make this little bonus perpetual album out of the junk journal pages, just as a fun little extra, which can be made with all of the Victoria Design um, journal pages that you've got or going to have. So keep watching and let's get on with making one of these. Hi there and welcome to the first part of our project using the Wonderland Adventure Papers by Victoria Designs. So we're going to start today by making the magazine box. Now with the box, if you've seen the project already, you'll know there's a box and then a lid to go over the top. Both are made in exactly the same way. And you can actually make the project with just the box. You don't actually have to do the lid. So if you want a quicker project, you can just do this part. So we're going to start off by doing the main part. So we need to start with our box base, which is three inches by seven inches. And there'll be two sides. And so we need to cut two of these at seven inches by nine and a quarter. So you'll notice that the sides, the shorter side is the same as my base. So they'll be going on like that. Then we need a back to the box. Now, if I did it the same size as my box base, it's gonna to be too short then. I want it to come and come, because as soon as I add these two sides, we've got that extra width. So the way I do it is, I've got the three inches across. So it's three inches plus two lots of your width. 
So whatever thickness, chipboard, greyboard, whatever you're using, whatever thickness it is, to your three inches, just add two lots of width. Now I'm using one and a half mil chipboard here. So I'm adding one eighth. So I'm cutting mine at three and an eighth by nine and a quarter. So it's the same height as the sides. And then the front, again, is three inches wide plus two widths. So I'm cutting mine at three and an eighth by five and a quarter high. Okay. So let's grab the size first because I need to do one little thing with these before we carry on. To get that magazine rack shape, I'm going to be marking four inches down the side here. Actually, let me grab a black pen, you'll see it a bit better. So four inches. And then again, four inches across, starting the top right, going left. So it's four inches down and four inches back. And I'm just going to join those two lines up. And I'm just going to take my knife and a metal ruler. You could use your uh, trimmer if you wanted to. Can we just cut it gently? I did forget to bring my cutting board, so let me just bring my other side in. Now I've gone through a couple of times to short, so now I can just follow what I had. I'm almost through. So let's cut that out. So now you can see that magazine rack sort of shape coming now. Now we're going to do exactly the same Onto the other. So that's all I'm doing is rather measuring again, just placing it on top, putting my knife against it, and cutting. Of course, if you're using a trimmer, just measure it again, that's fine. Or use this as a template and just take your pen down. Okay. I think I'm almost through. I could just take my knife and fin uh, scissors and So now we've got two of our sides cut with that four inch uh, triangle out. Okay, so all my pieces are now cut and ready to go. So now we're ready to start putting our box together. So one way of doing it would be using uh, construction strips. So this is just a one inch piece of black cardstock, which I've scored then at half an inch. And you just fold them into right angles like that and cut them to the width you like. So this one would fit across the box side along the bottom. So you just glue it onto there and then glue your base on top. So that would give you your uh, 90 degree construction there. But then the inside would be um, quite visible. So we're going to be lining it with black cardstock, but also we won't be able to go up to the line. So you could just take your black marker and before you build it, just take your black pen around the edge and then we could just line up on the inside. So just go around all the edges before you build it together. And then when we come to line it, it won't matter so much. So that's one method, the construction strips. But the method I prefer is using some construction type tape. So this is just 
uh, frame tape. So I got this from uh, The Cool Cats. So I'll add a link below so if you want to get it. It's a kind of papery type material and it's good for construction. You can use it to attach it together. It's acid lignin free, so safe for our papers and things. So I'm gonna grab my scissors and we're gonna just take the base and we're gonna cover it in tape. So if you've seen some of my other videos, you'll have seen me using this tape many times, but if not, don't worry, I'm gonna take you through how to do it. So I've just pulled my tape. I'm just sort of weighing down just off camera there. And I'm taking my base piece here, the three by seven one, and I'm placing it down the center of my tape. So it's half there and half there. And I've just given it a wiggle to get it to attach. And I'm just lifting it up and attaching that short side. Now I need just to pull my tape a little bit more. Keep it nice and tight and place my third side and then the next one and then just enough to overlap on the final side. So I'm just going to cut it off I'm going to pull it tight and connect it there. So now it's going all the way around, touching all four sides. I'm just gonna pinch the corner so I can see a little line. Just give them a little pinch, top and bottom. So when you're not on camera, trust me, this is much easier. But trying to get it in shot is probably trickier. So it's a bit hard to see now because I've already done that black bit. Maybe if I turn it over, ah, here we are. Here's one I haven't used the black marker on. Here's the corner of my chipboard. So I'm just going to go in and cut out a V shape towards that corner and pull it off. And I'm going to do that on all for the top ones. So this way you've got to make sure you don't put it down because we haven't done the bottom part yet. And turn it over. So I can't see with the black on black there. You'll see it maybe a little bit better when I do the other ones. Okay, so now I've just mitered all those corners and I'm just gonna take my finger across the top to get attached and just pinch it gently from the middle and out. So I'm just rubbing it on to make the contact, just gently pinching and rubbing my finger over just to start that contact. And once we're ready, just pinch down on the middle and run your finger down. Okay, make some contact. Oh, I haven't cut off that V. Were you all shouting at me? So pinch and press. And the first time I did this, believe me, it wasn't the prettiest, it wasn't the tidiest, but it comes with practice. So we've got now our tape all the way around on both sides. I'm just gonna take my Teflon uh, tool and I'm just gonna press it all down. So the tape and this tool both come from Cool Cats. So have a look at their shop down below, you can Find the tools. So you can see the tape now is nice and neat on both sides. So that's the base. The box front is going to be exactly the same. So I'm just going to place it half on 
this side and half on that side, just down the middle, keeping my tape nice and taut. It is a lot easier, trust me, when you're not trying to keep things in frame for a camera. And then just trim off. Pull it over that corner, make the contact there. Then we're just going to trim the corners. So if the triangle sticks to your uh, scissors, which it inevitably will, get in the habit of taking it off because otherwise it will stick to the next bit you're cutting. I tried doing it without taking them off once and it wasn't pretty. So we've covered all four sides. Again, make the contact, pinch a little bit, then start from the middle out, make the contact, pinch, and take it out. Pinch it to make the contact, and out. Take my tool. And then the back is the same again. Okay. And just, even. so if you did have a little crease or something, your Teflon tool, your bone folder, it'll get it out. And now the sides, Pretty much it's the same again just we have these two extra bits which i'll just show you now so i'm going to start on the base see when the triangle has found its way on so we're gonna half on there just the little okay so i'm just using the corner of my table which you can't see off camera is just on the edge of the table so that's something stopping it from rolling towards me. Like I say, when you're not filming it, it is a lot easier. Sometimes what I do is just put um, my other scissors just in the middle just to weight it down. So that just keeps it in place there. Or the edge of a coffee table works too. Okay. There we are. So we're just going to pinch those corners. Not so much of a corner there. Let's bring in our scissors. Let's do the 90 degree ones first because we know what we're doing there. We're just going around as before, cutting off our corners. So if you're using the construction tape, uh, construction strip method, this is obviously all right. You're just taking your uh, black pen all the way around just to hide the workings of the inside of your box. So that's all this stage is doing. You're just giving it that nice little finish. Okay, and then with those angled bits, again, we're just going to do exactly the same, but just not as sharp a V, just a tiny V towards that corner. And again here, just tiny V. Or if you just want to go straight down, you can. So 
but let's start with the base. Let's fold that over. Then the back, the long side, pinch and press, and the short side. So those were exactly the same as before. This one is exactly the same as before. And now this is just that angled one. You can see by making those Vs smaller, we, we get a nice finish there with a mitered tape. And then just burnish it all down. Let's get rid of that little triangle. And the last piece now is our other side. Now, if you look at this now, it hasn't come back perfectly. I must have gone a bit wonky at some point. It really doesn't matter. This tape is so forgiving. You don't need to be perfect. Okay. So there we have all our pieces just lined with our construction tape. So what I'm going to do now is before we start assembly, I'm going to decorate the inside of my box. So for that, these are the papers I'm planning on using on the outside from the Wonderland Adventure. But I've also got some black cardstock and my trimmer. So let's line everything up move our scissors, we won't need that for a bit. So our box base was three by seven. So I'm gonna cut a strip, and go this way maybe, at a quarter of an inch smaller. So two and three quarters by six and three quarters. That's gonna line my base, then my front, I can just use what was left over, I think, yep, on my front. If you want to cut one exact, you will just cut it at, uh, forget about that bit because your chipboard is going to cover there, so three inches is, will be fine here as well, by five, so three by five if you want to cut one. Then we've got our long back, again, two and three quarters, and it was by nine and a quarter, so let's go back a quarter to nine inches. So that's a three by nine. And then we went two pieces, and we brave and cut them at the same time. So they were seven by nine and a quarter. So let's look at seven. So we're going back to six and three quarters. by nine. So now this is the inside. Make sure they're the opposite way round. I'm just going to line up my first sheet with the little black board around all three sides. But obviously you can't see any chipboard there because we're going to cut it across. Now for this, I will need a pencil, which is, ah, oh, here we are. I knew I had one ready. So here's the edge of my chipboard. So I'm just going to come in a little tiny bit and a little tiny bit there. And... Join them up. Do I, I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna cut them together. Let's see if this risk paid off. If not, I'm just gonna have to cut another one out there. So there's one. 
and flip it over and took the risk did pay off. So, so all I'm going to do now is take my glue, you could use your um, strong double sided tape as well, but you want to get nice and close to the edge. Because the album is going to be dropped in and out, make sure you get nice and close to the edge on the top and that diagonal piece at least because otherwise your album will catch on the way in. And I'm just gonna place that and take my tool. And the glue I'm using is uh, the Cosmic Shimmer acrylic glue, and this does dry clear. So if I get a little bit squirting out, I don't mind because at least then I know that edge has been stuck down. So let's take it up to the edge. Go. So there's the sides lined. It's got the liner on those. The back. Flip it over just so I've got the measurements in case I need to remember them later. Now, with this one, you'll find that you've got a bit of extra here and here of the tape showing. That's because the chipboard is gonna come and cover from here to here and here to here. So that's why it's a bit narrower. And same here. you'll find that the base will be much closer to all four edges than the other two because we added that two extra width, the extra one eighth of an inch. There we go. So we've got the base the front and the back and the two sides all lined in our black cardstock. So it doesn't need to be thick cardstock because it's just there to tidy up the inside. So normally now I would let these dry a little bit but let's get going. So this is now where you would start using your construction strips and you would build, yeah, here's the long one, so if you're using your construction strip construction strips, what you want to do is just cut off the diagonal, otherwise you're gonna end up with lots of bulk in those corners. You would glue onto the base first because this bit now is gonna go there. So glue, sorry, glue onto the side and then slide your base on and stick. Okay, you don't want to be putting it base and then because you're going to get that extra one and a half mil high and your fronts will be um, different as well then because it'll be too wide because you've come in half an in, uh, one and a half mils from each side. So that's three mils, so it's quite a difference. Okay, so stick the side Stick the base, take the next one, oh, stick it to the side, and then stick it to the base. And what you can do then as well with your construction strip is if you score a half and then an extra one eighth, you'll get a very thin U shape. And you can use that then just to neaten any edges which will be exposed at the end. 
Okay, but because I'm using the tape method, I'm going to grab the tape and I'm going to grab and prepare the base piece. Now, this is the inside, so this will be on the outside. So, what I'm going to do is work on the outside and I'm going to take a strip which is about an inch wider on each side and go so my tape you can see is half covering the chipboard and half exposed there now mine has folded over here don't worry i can use it now because a lot of this is going to be of the edges are going to be cut off so again take a long piece i've gone a bit longer this time just to get rid of that folded bit there and i've got it half on the chipboard and half off and now i can find the end i'm going to cut a piece just a bit longer than So, if you're going to turn it over and put it on, just be careful because that sticky is exposed. So, I just find I lift it and drop it on. Works. And here again. Oh, I had it sticky underneath. There we are, sticky up and drop it on. So you don't have to be exact, just roughly halfway. So let's have a look at what we've got so far. So we've got our base, as you can see that's where it is, covered on all four sides. And I'm just going to come down to that corner and here and cut it away any extra bit to chop it off so we're coming towards that corner on both sides any extra just cut it off so come around let's cut towards and cut towards. So that's our base prepared. So now I'm going to bring in my first side. Now what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take my side, making sure the cover bit is towards the inside, and I'm just going to line it up, touching the edge of my base. So making contact all the way down. So I've lined it up with the base as it would stand. Give it a wiggle to make sure it's got contact. And I'm just going to let it drop. So you will end up with that little space in between. But then when you lift it up, it'll make the contact. Okay. So if you've done it so that it's stuck there, when you lift it up, you wouldn't have that space. So let's turn them around. Make sure your diagonal pieces are same direction. So I'm just lining it up, touching that chipboard base. Hit the bottom now, so I'm just gonna wiggle it. Let's make contact with that tape and just gently drop it down. And now I'm gonna lift it up just to help me with the front piece. So I want it to be upright, sort of centered on both. Yeah, it's touching the base for me as well. And it's dropping. So this takes me back to like my maths lessons when I was in primary school, when you were making 3D shapes and making a net for them. So now, 
So the reason I'm bringing them up is because if you remember, this edge is actually wider than my base. Or you could just centralize it if you wanted to. There we have it. So now we've got the four pieces attached to the base. You can really see the box coming together now. So that's all we're gonna do now is start attaching it. So if you want to help, you can actually put some glue for extra strength. So I'm just doing little dots as close to the edge, not too much glue either, up to the edge. Top. There we are. And before I bring it up, I'm just going to cut two short bits of the tape. Just place it down from the Pick it up in a second and I'm going to use them just to hold things in place for me. So I'm going to bring it up, line up the top here and here because that's the bit you're actually going to see which is going to be quite visible. And then just take those two little bits of tape and just hold it in place just to give the glue a little bit of a chance to take i'm going to put some as well near the top here just to tidy up those two joints to get a nice lined up corner there And we're going to do the same now. So let me cut some extra bits. Get rid of those triangle bits. Let's get the glue. Closer to the edge. There. And lift and attach. Yeah. So let's just take those little bits of tape just to secure it in place for now. There you have your box so you can finish there or if you want to tidy up your edges a little bit more what you can do is take a piece the length of your project whichever side you're doing this is the non-sticky side facing you now fold it up Cut a mitre, and again, just cut a mitre to the edge. What you can do then is line up the point at the bottom and line up the point at the top, and then just fold it over. So this will just neaten off those edges for you. So let me see if I can show you. This is what it looked like before. So there's like, you know, it could come loose there, but now you've got it totally covered there. So let's do it on this one. So I'm just gently placing it on.
folding it over. Miter in the corners. This is the one we're working on. Place it down, just gently fold it over. So you've just neatened off those two sides. You could have taken off your um, bits you used earlier to hold things in place, but you don't need to take it off. And now I'm going to do the same with my front pieces. And then you can also tape around the bottom as well and do exactly as we did at the start and take V notches and that'll just tidy up the bottom as well. So here's my chipboard. So I'm just making contact with half my tape. Flip my box over. I'm just going around all the way around the base. A little tiny bit of overlap and bring it in. If it's not even, don't panic. It doesn't need to be because most of this is now going to be covered in our decorative tape anyway. So just as we did at the start, we're just going to come in and cut those V's. And there we go. That is your box base magazine rack made. And you could just leave it as it is and just put the albums, which we'll be making later, straight in. So it's the room for the two albums. Or if you want to make the full kit, and make the lid version is actually built exactly the same way. So what I'll do, I'll give you the measurements. So this time, everything is a quarter of an inch bigger in each direction. So our base originally was three by seven. So now we've got three and a quarter by seven and a quarter. With the sides then, seven and a quarter by nine and a quarter. That'll be our two sides. Our front then will be three and three eighths by five and a quarter, or three and a quarter plus the two widths. So if you wanted to just measure, put those two in place there and just measure across, that'd be the width of your front. Same with the back, which is nine and a quarter tall. And again, to get my magazine shape, I'm going to be measuring four inches across. And four inches down. Same as I did before. And cutting those off. So rather than watch me do it all again, what I'm going to do, I'm going to head off and make this and I'll see you at the end. But as I said, it's exactly the same. Just take your base, your two sides, your front and your back, cover them all with the tape, do the same with the base and then just tidy up all the edges. So I'll just head off and do that and see you in a moment. 
So here we go, a quick fast forward. And I've done my lid exactly the same as my box. Now, if I turn this one over, the box one over, you will see it's the same height, but the width is slightly shorter and it's a bit narrower too. So what that means now is if I have my box like that, I'm actually going to turn my lid upside down and flip it over. So now my diagonals are the same. And what will happen is they will now slide into each other. So what you get is a magazine rack with this little triangle exposed of the box, like so. So when you're decorating, make sure you've got your diagonal upwards for your box and the diagonal towards the bottom to decorate the lid. So let's have a look at some of the papers from the kit. So originally I was thinking, oh, I might use this one because I thought the border would have looked really nice along the bottom, going around so you would have seen it poking out. So that would, would have been a nice option. And there is a paper which goes with that with some images as well. Some more kaleidoscope type paper. That would have been a nice plain one for the base. Then there's this one with Alice, which has got a bit of purples and some of the wording. So I think this would be the one I'm going to go for because it also has a matching paper with the white rabbit in the corner. So what I've done, I've just printed a bunch of these. So I've got two with the rabbit on for my lid, and then just the back of paper then for my base. So because it is a digi kit, I want to print out, I have got this white border, which I will need to get rid of before I start measuring. So let's have a look. So we're decorating the base first, the box part. So if you wanted to just do this one for your album and not do the lid, then now would be the time maybe to put your white rabbit in that corner. But because I've gone for everything, I'm not using the white rabbit on the inside. So I've cut off two edges ready so I can start wondering. Now I haven't given you exact measurements for the papers. That's because there's gonna be a little bit of human error when you do your uh, construction, depending on if you're using the strips or the tape or anything. So the easiest thing to do is imagine this front as a full rectangle. So the rectangle is now nine and a quarter, but because we've got that front and back, it's going to be a little bit wider now. So it's seven and one eighth. So I'm now going to go back to six and seven. So go back two eighths, so a quarter of an inch. So let me double check again. So six and seven eighths. And again, double check the height. I nine. Nine being a quarter of an inch shorter. So now I've got a piece which is going to fit onto this, onto one of the sides. But again, I've got that diagonal. So I'm just going to grab my pencil and I'm going to mark here's where my chipboard is. I'm going to come back just an eighth of an inch and there. So let's join those two up. 
I want to find my pencil mark. There it is. See it now. And draw that line. Let's grab my scissors. Of course, you could use your trimmer if you wanted to. So now I've got a piece of paper which will mat nicely onto the front there. If you find it, you're not happy with the angle, just change it a little bit, you know, just go back to them a little bit more. Now, it's just my thing, like, thing to do is to take my Distress ink and I just take away that white edge of the paper. Because I've used my trimmer, and now let's just if I can get some glue out. There we are. So yeah, this project is quite large, it's making it tricky to get it in shot all the time. I'm also going to put some glue on it because I don't want it coming off. Make sure I adhere all the edges. And can even turn it over and burnish from the inside. So just be aware that when you took your top, it's anything that's in this bottom left-hand corner of this side will be visible, and the bottom right here, the opposite to the diagonal. That's where you're gonna see. So if you're gonna put anything interesting, you wanna put it there. So we're gonna do exactly the same for this one. Now, just because the other side was one side doesn't necessarily mean that it's true for both sides. Again, human error. So I am going to measure my box and take quarter of an inch off. So it is nine and it is just under six, seven, so six and seven eighths. So nine. Right, so seven inches back, one eighth. And there we go. Okay. And again, I do have that. I no, I'd better use my black pen. I might see my marks a bit better. I'm lining it up getting a nice even border around all the sides I can see. And, oh, it's on Alice's hand, so I may struggle to see that. There And just take my distress ink just getting rid of if you can see that white edge because when it's up against the black tape you can see it And make sure the glue. Oh, I didn't check if I'm happy with the angle. Yep, that's fine. Okay. 
I'll get some on the box. Size so I can get it nice and flat, and that's what's good about the Teflon tool is I can really rub on my black cardstock on the inside, and it's not going to mark. Whereas if you had a plastic bone folder, you might see those little marks you get when you uh, put plastic onto black card. So yeah, definitely a Teflon tool is something to invest in. And now let's just get the back. Another sheet. So let's have a look how wide we were. So I mean, out here, we got that extra width, wasn't it? So it's three and an eighth. So I'm going to go two and seven eighths. Nine and a quarter tall, so we're going. No. Oh, let's make sure I got the text the right way up. And then just the front to go. So, again, measure my box just to make sure Two and seven eighths is fine. And five inches top. Grab my Teflon tool. So now we have all the inside decorated or covered in black, all the outside covered covered in decorative paper, just the bottom to go, which was um, a three by seven. So let's have a look if I've got any of my scrap bits which would cover. Do you know what? There we are. That bit will do fine. Of course, you could use some of your decks of paper if after making your albums and things later on, you've got a spare piece left over. You can decorate it, but for me, let's save our decks of papers for other things. There we are. So that could be the end of your project if you're just doing the magazine folio one. But what you've also got in the kits, pages, with some ephemera pieces. So if you wanted to add a little nameplate or something to the front of the box, just keep it nice and flat. But because we've also got the lid, let's bring that in. Remembering now to decorate the lid with the diagonal at the bottom. 
So I'm bringing in the coordinating piece this time with the white rabbit. Let's do it on this side first. Let's measure the height. So it's nine still. The sunshine's coming out, so if there's glare now. So nine inch by it's seven under just less than seven and a half. So if I go just under seven and a quarter. Yep, that's fitting. Again now, because we've got that diagonal, I'm gonna just turn it round just to make it easier so I've got more sturdy area to mark. There and there. Let's bring in our ruler. Well, the sun really is coming up now. I think I'm just gonna have to. Again, taking my distress ink. Now, if you wanted more of a, a shabby chic or distressed look, you could just come in more on the corners and things, but that's up to you. Let's turn it around. I did forget to check if I was happy with the diagonal. Luckily, once again, I am. So let's glue it on. One side done, let's turn it over, get it nice and firm. And so this one, I wasn't sure if I was going to use it or not because it, you're only going to see his head. But I thought, well, it did add a bit of interest to the outside, so let's go with it. So cut off the white. And let's just check we are happy it's nine inches again. Yep. And we are again going to go one, two, seven and an eighth this time. Seven and an eighth. Let's double check we are happy with the black border. Yep, let's grab our black pen. Just mark that that's where my chip was going to be. So back a little bit. It's hard to see in there because it's in his jacket. Can I just double check? Before I ink and everything, if I'll be happy with this. That's looking pretty really good. So let's distress it then. And again, glue away, make sure we're getting up to those edges. And those corners, we don't want those corners peeling off. 
and burnish from the inside so you can see we get that little white rabbit there and bringing in the one without the white rabbit this time So we are three and one, two, three and three eighths. So I'm going to go three and one eighth. Let me check if three and one eighth will be enough for the back as well. We want it just slightly bigger than three and one eighth on the back. That's what I said, it's human error. So that's why I haven't given you the exact me measurements. That's three and a quarter, so three and an eighth. And three, do I say a little bit more than an eighth? Yeah, so just a fraction over three and... What do I say again? <laughs> just a fraction over three and a quarter. Am I right there? Still a bit too wide, so let's come back onto three and a quarter. Then. I think I meant it was a fraction under three and a quarter. Let's have a look. That looks better. If I remember correctly, it was my box was nine, yeah, nine and a quarter. So a nine inch piece for this one. And the front. is five and a quarter. So I want more of that purple. So I'm going to cut off the bottom, I think. Just have a bit more purpley. Let me just double check again. Yeah, five inches. All is best to double check. I think the sun's actually decided to hide away now. It came out for a little bit. I must be careful putting this one on, making sure the text is the right way up. This was the front piece. So now you're working it as if it's an upside down magazine rack now. So if you have got a directional paper, make sure the diagonal again is towards the bottom. And then There we go. That's the last of the sides done. So all I got to do now is side on the top. Am I going to put a black piece, or I'm going to print off another piece and have it? So I think this will be the front of my box, won't it? Here. So I want the text reading that way. Well, the piece of paper cover. Yeah. So let's have a look. This has got the start of the story, so that actually might work nicely on the top, which is three and a half. So I want a three and a quarter inch piece. Bam. 
by it's seven and a half, so seven and a quarter. Let's see. I think I just want it a bit shorter again. I want a bit more black showing. So I'm just going by eye this time, just trimming off a little bit. If I still want a little bit more off the bottom. I'm starting to think I didn't, I measured the size rather than the quarter of an inch smaller. There we are. Bring in the distressing for the last piece. Just add in the glue. So if I want this to be the front, I'm going to place the text so I can actually read it in this orientation. Again, just burnish it down. And there we go. Our Wonderland Adventure magazine box. Hard to get in shot in this orientation. I know because it's quite large. Again, you can make it with just that bit. It would still be quite a nice project. And now you're just going to need something to put inside. So the next part will be making some albums. Here's just an empty case, just to show you. We're gonna make two books to go inside, which will then be covered with the lid. So again, in the Victoria Designs kit, you will get lots more sheets and things. We're gonna get some um, journal pages and some ephemera pieces. So if you wanted to decorate more of the outside of the box or the corners, because you could put anything you want there because the box isn't going to catch on it. So if you wanted a more 3D bit, put it there. But yeah, you could add your own pockets or pouches, but I quite like it. Nice and simple. As it comes, nice and flat, nice and sturdy, nice strong box. So thanks for watching part one. And I look forward to seeing you in the next part of the project. So hold on tight and we'll get on with the albums. Hello everyone and welcome now to part two of my project with Victoria Designs using the Wonderland Adventures paper. Now if you've seen part one, you'll have already seen this box being made. The magazine style box. And now we need something to go inside it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make two of these albums. So here's the first one. So let's get going on making another one. So to start with, you're gonna need two pieces of your gray board cut at six and three quarters by nine inches. I'm using one and a half mil here and a spine piece which measures nine by one and a quarter. So I know you've probably got your own method for covering your album covers and your preferred methods. So some might want to cover this in paper, but I'm gonna use um, some frame tape which is used in making um, the photo frames. So it's acid lignin free and good for our crafty projects So because it's, it's designed to work with photographs and things. And I got mine from the Cool Cats. So if you want a link, I will put one in the description below. So that's all I'm doing with my tape is I've got the sticky side now facing up. And I'm going to take my grey board and stand it upright and I'm going to place it just halfway along the bottom and place it down the middle of my tape. Then I'm going to extend my tape 
and turn my cover onto it. So I'm keeping it nice and taut and placing the next piece on top, extending my paper again. So it is quite strong, but you still need to be quite careful because it does tear. And if it does tear, it's not a problem. You just restart where you finish, you just overlap. So let's go again. And then we're almost back. So let's just make sure we got a bit of an overlap. Let's cut off that last bit. And now with this last bit, I'm just going to bring it over to meet. Now it doesn't have to meet exact. So there we have our tape just wrapped around the edge. So now we want to make sure it folds flat. So what I'm going to do, if I try and get one of the corners in view, I can pinch my tape so I know that's where the corner is. And I'm going to cut just towards that chipboard and then just cut the V out. Make sure I take the tape off, otherwise it'll stick to everywhere. So if, you, if I have a look at what I've done, that's my tape. So I've cut out the V just towards that um, corner of the grade board. And I just carry on going around all four corners. You have to be quite careful here because remember now your tape is still sticking out underneath. So just hold in the center of your chipboard. So I've done all four here, flip it over and just repeat again. Cut one, two, three, and four. So now we've just mitered all those corners of our frame tape. So I'm just going to take my finger and I'm just going to run it a bit along. So if you've watched the box tutorial, this is exactly the same as I did when we prepared all our pieces. I'm just sort of pinching the edge, make sure I've got contact, and then pressing it down by holding the middle and drawing out. So I'm just rubbing it on to get that contact, rubbing sort of over and back, just gently pinching it. You can see that gives me a nice crisp edge then that way. Then I just pinch down on the middle and just pinch down and work out from the center like so. And again, just to repeat on the long edges. So I'm just making the contact, getting that nice sharp one and then pressing it all down. As I said in the box video, it does take a little bit of practice. Don't panic if it's not smooth the first time. Because what you can do, just take your Teflon tool or your bone folder. And as you press it down to burnish it down, it'll actually flatten any creases. And give you a nice, smooth finish. But again, if you wanted to do um, your regular cardstock cover, you can. And I know Victoria Design's got quite a few tutorials on how to do that way. So it's just showing you an alternative. So I'm going to move this out the way. I need the space. So I can draw out my tape. So I've put a couple of wrinkles into it this time just to show you. Once you get your Teflon tool and you rub it, those wrinkles have gone. So we got another couple of wrinkles here. So we're just going to use our Teflon tool and we got a nice smooth edge. 
Let's just do all four. And the back. So we've got our two covers done. Now with the spine, you don't need to cover it all, but you will need to just take about an inch or so and just tape over the top and over the bottom. You will just see a tiny bit there. So we're just gonna cover them up, burnish it down. So it's covered things. So that bit is just to make everything nice and neat, to give us a nice, neat finish. But this tape is also gonna make our hinge. So for this, I find it easy if I just turn it that way. I'm going to cut my tape just with a couple of inches each side. I'll put this one out of the way for now. And I'm going to just lay flat on my table, sticky side up. And I'm springing my cover and I'm putting it so it's just running down the centre of my tape. I'm now going to take my spine and I'm going to line it up with the corner of my cover. Now, when you're making your cardstock cover ones, you're looking for that double gap, the double of the thickness of your chipboard. Well, that's what I'm doing now. So by placing one on top of the other, I've made my chipboard double the thickness and I'm just tilting it towards me, pressing it on so I get some contact and bringing it down. I'm just pressing in the middle, not at the edge because I might squeeze my tape down. Then when I open it, just tease it back apart and bring it over. So now you'll see there is a space in between my black cover chipboard and my spine. And over. And again, I'm going to do the same. Let's turn it this way. Placing it down the middle. Now I do now I realize usually I only just cover three sides, the two short and the one long. I think I just got a bit carried away with the fourth side. You only need to do three because this black spine tape will cover the fourth. I think I got carried away because I was doing the box earlier. So I was, where I was covering all four sides. So yeah, you only have to do three and that'll actually make it a bit easier for you to see. So what I've done now is lined up my cover onto the spine. I'm holding everything together, pressing it, pressing it down, pulling it apart and over. And here we are. And now we're just going to take the tape and we're going to cover those gaps. So this is why you don't really need to cover that fourth side. Why I did it, I have no idea. As I said, it's probably because I've been on the box method and I'm still in that mentality. So let's just burnish that tape down. Just, again, we can get rid of any wrinkles and then just bring it up. And what you now have, if I show you, so this is the inside of my album, but my outside is all nice and neat. So there we go. The cover is done. So let's add our spine hinges in. So for that, I'm gonna need my cutting board and I will need my scoreboard in a second. And for my spines, I need to cut at eight and a half inches. 
And then a little tip is, if you've got eight and a half, go back just a hair's breadth, then your pages will slide on a bit easier later on. So eight and a half, you want one at two and a quarter. And one at one and three quarters. Now, it, because we're going to be making two albums, but I already made one, you can carry on now and do your second ones out of that same sheet. That'll save you time. And grab your scoreboard. So with the long side down the left-hand side, I'm just going to take my scoring uh, score tool and I'm scored half. All the way down half an inch and three quarters. Now, if you want to also make a little dash at the one, you can. So one, two, it's just two more slots across. That will also help you line up your second spine later on. This one, when you put it on top. So I've just turned it around. I'm just gonna repeat half, three quarters, a little dash at one, and go across to do a little mark there. So those two dashes, they are where we're going to actually place our next spine, which is this one. So we're gonna do the same, half, three quarters, flip it around, half, and three quarters. That's just easier than trying to work out all the other ones. So here we go. So we're going to take our Teflon tool. We're going to score those two half inch ones and the three quarter of an inch ones. So you've got that shape, but what we want to do with these half inch ones on the end is train them back as well. So that will give us that hinge method to open our pages. So just train them in both directions. And the same with this one. Now this one can be a little fiddlier because we've only got those quarter of an inch spaces. Train it backwards and then that inner one again. And this half one we're gonna train in both directions so I can bring it back and so what we've got is our U shape. And then those half inch ones open up like that. So let me just work that one as well. So we've got that sort of shape, which just makes it easier for us to attach our tapes. So I've got some strong adhesive here. This is um, Sticky Paws by Cool Cats. Score tape, anything like that. Just not your regular double sided. It's just not strong enough. Red liner tape would work. I just don't like red liner tape. It's just a personal thing because that red backing is just so static. It just gets everywhere. So I'm just cutting it in half so that I can get it onto that slimmer one. I just need a little bit more for the center. And you can take off the tape backing. And on my spine, I always add glue as well. 
So that tape is gonna keep it in place for now. But a bit of glue will just make sure it stays there permanently. So if you remember now, we did those two guides. So let's bring it together. So my hinged bits are there. So when I squeeze it together to make that little triangle, if you can see it. What I'm gonna do now is line up that triangle between those two dots, the two score lines, turn it over and onto the other. Now, because I was watching the camera rather than this, I have got some glue here, but it will dry clear. I'm using the Cosmic Shimmer acrylic glue and it really does just dry. You won't notice it later on. Just want to be aware I don't get the rest stuck onto it. So now I'm just going to put more double-sided tape. Right there. Take it off. And... So the reason I took the backing off before doing this was I would have had a tiny bit of overlap. So I took it off just so that I get all that contact. And some glue as well. So let's bring back our cover. So this is the inside. And I'm now just going to hold it together. And I'm just going to centralise it so I'm even top and bottom and left and right. It's looking pretty good to me. And there we have the base of our album all made. We've got our hinge mechanism in there and we've got our covers made. So I'm want that to dry a little bit. So whilst it's drying, let's prepare some of the cover papers. So for the cover paper, I've decided to go for this design here, just because it's got so much detail that it'll just cover my co uh, cover in one piece without me having to do much to it. And I don't want any bulk on it, so I don't want to add any embellishments, otherwise it's not going to fit into my box. So I went for this highly decorative paper, but I've printed it twice. To show you that's for later on this was printed with the fit to page method on my printer this i clicked off the fit to page so what i've got is the whole piece but i've got a bigger white above and beyond above and below so what i'm going to use is this one but that one would also have fitted fine but this is just a bit larger for me to see. So I printed off two sheets and a trimmer. So the way I mat and layer anything in my album is whatever size the piece is, I just cut each side quarter of an inch shorter. So let's just start by getting rid of the white edge. So I'm gonna start with the top, okay. Now my album cover is nine inches tall. So seven, nine, I'm gonna go back a quarter to eight and three quarters. And then it was six and three quarters wide. So I'm gonna to go to six and a half. Keep this, that's important. So now that is gonna cover that in one piece. Now my spine, was cut at one and a quarter. So carrying on the pattern, I'm going to place this on my one inch and cut. So now you'll have that pattern repeat from there going around the spine. But before I do it on the spine, uh, on the cover, I'm just going to take my black soot distressing and just apply some to the edge. Because what you get when you trim is a bit of a white edge on the paper. So this will just get rid of that because we've got the black tape 
and black cardstock later, having that black will just get rid of it. So now it's black on black rather than that white, which would probably catch your eye now and again. So there we have it. Now, if you're wondering what paper I've printed on, I use ice paper and for my cover and uh, boxes and stuff, I use my 190 GSM, but you can get it in lighter as well. But 190 goes through my printer lovely. It's nice and thick. And I think you can see the quality of the print between the images and that paper. It's great. So now I'm just going to cut one more piece for the back. So again, I'm going to keep that top. I'm going to cut from the white rabbit side this time. And it was, if I remember correctly, six and three quarters. Yep, yeah, by nine. So six and three quarters means I'm going back to six and a half. And the nine means I'm going back to eight and three quarters. But how lovely would this paper be if you cut all these out and use them as cards in your album? So any of those tuck spots or something you make, you could use these as your own little cards, little journaling areas. In fact, I think I've got another one of these printed, a spare one, which I might just do that later on. So let's bring it back. So this is the front. Try and get to the edge. Finish it down. And now the spine bit. Okay, and just burnish it on. And, you know, I'm just doing the cover really basic today, but the kit comes with so many extras. You could decoupage it up, just keep it flat, don't use any foam tape or anything, but just decoupage some extra images on top. So the main part of the Victoria Designs kits are that junk journal page or the journaling pages which are these so you've got like a page in a book with a spine down the middle so you could cut one of those out place it on the front nice and easy and you'd still have a nice flat album to go into the box in the end so there we have the outside of our cover done so let's move on to the inside so for the inside i've done something a little bit different here, I've taken one of the pages and what I've done is shrunk it down to the size I want. So down to the uh, six and a half by eight and three quarters. So just shrunk it down in, I used Microsoft Publisher, Microsoft Word, whatever you got, whatever graphics package. So have a go. That's the great thing about Digis is you can make it fit your project and what I did then, because I'm going to use the same image both sides, because it was digital, I flipped it. So now we've got two pages, but in the opposite direction. I mean, it did have some text, but I didn't think it was that clear that anybody was going to read it. 
to actually understand that it's actually backwards. So just be aware of that. Don't do something which has got a nice paragraph written which you can read. And I could just use my trimmer, but I find it easier with the scissors like this when I want to be exact. Now we'll see when I put them onto my cover, you can see a little bit of the white showing there. And there, so what I'm going to do again, just take my distress ink. So if you can see the edge there, the white, it does actually show. So this is just camouflaging it. And it also hides any of my cutting, which wasn't perfect, which a lot of it is. Mm. Just quickly taking my black ink all the way around. Okay, put the lid on so I know I'll get it everywhere. So let's have a look if we want Alice inside with them floating in. I think I quite like it like that with sort of the arch of the playing cards. Now I've kept the inside just flat. But this is your chance here now to make it your own. If you wanted to add some pockets or something to the inside, go ahead. But I just thought these images were so lovely that I'm just going to go as they are. Move my spine. Get my Teflon tool in. So this just he helps to um, spread the glue as well underneath to get that even coverage. Just wipe off any of the excess. There we go. And our cover is done. So what we need now is some pages to go inside. So I'm going to put this aside and grab everything ready to make my pages. So to make the pages, I've printed off a load of the backing papers from the Wonderland Adventures papers. Again, onto my ice paper, 190 GSM, and it's the matte paper. So you can really see the detail in these images then. So I've got just a range of them. Look at that kaleidoscope of Alice. And some nice little border pages, some large imagery. So I've got a little bit, oh, that's the one I used on the box, wasn't it? With the white rabbit. So loads of different pages. So just print off a bunch. I've got my 220 GSM black cardstock, my scoreboard, which I can put away for a second, and my trimmer and my bone folder. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut four pages per album. So if you're going to make it all in one go, you're going to need to cut this eight times. Now I'm just going to make the one page because each page is identical and I've already made the others. So for each page, you're going to need two pieces of cardstock. The first one, you're going to cut at 11 and a half. By six and a quarter. And then the other one, 
you're going to trim with a long side into your trimmer, just trim at nine and a half. Now I've then just used the A4 width, but if you're not using A4 paper, just cut it at eight and a quarter. If it's longer, it's fine. Just the pocket will be a little bit wider later on. So you don't need to worry about how wide it goes. And then, as I said, you will need to cut those. Uh, you'll need four of each per album. Let's just bring my scoreboard back in. So with that long, narrow piece, let's score with the long side 11 half at the top and squad one and a half. Then I'm gonna flip it around and squad one and a half again. So just repeating it one and a half. Now if you want to do some curved bits, just take your corner rounder. I'm using my We Are Memory Keepers one here because it's got all three sizes. So I've got a large, medium and small. So I'll use a medium there when I come to mat and layer. Just corner round all four sides. Put them in the bin. Now with this, I've got my eight and a quarter along the top and I'm gonna score at six and a quarter down. Now flip it around. I'm going to score half an inch on the left, turn it 180 degrees and repeat it the other side. And then repeat that on all your pages. So it becomes a bit of a, uh, an assembly line really. Okay, so you won't, can't really see the score lines here yet, but with this one, that's all we're going to do is just fold the two Grab your Teflon tool. So the reason I use my Teflon tool rather than a plastic bone fold is it doesn't mark the black cardstock. Have you noticed if you're using a plastic one, sometimes you get those like white silvery marks. So that's all I do. I use my round bit just to start it off. Then I turn around to the sharper bit to get my sharper crease. So that's that one done. Again, you're gonna do it on all four of yours. And then I'm going to attach my tape. So if we have a look, what I've got is my small pocket one here, this side of my score line, and these half inch ones, top and bottom. So I'm going to place my tape within those half inch pieces. So I'm starting along the long one, and I'm stopping at the score line. And again, just up to that score line, flip it over, and I'm gonna do it on the, from the score line across that shorter bit, top and bottom. And now, I'm going to cut the V up to that cross. There's a cross with the score lines, just chop it out like that. And again on the other side, chop it to the cross and from the other side. Okay, so this time we're going to fold this back, start it with the curved one, then get my nice sharp one. And again, curved, curved side, and then and this is also burnishing my tape down. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to pull back those tabs. So that's now showing me where that double sided tape is. And then when I fold this here, that's what's going to create my pocket. So let's get it all nice and flat. And there you have it. So what I can do actually is expose this tape. Let's get it pressed down now. So 
So to attach our pages to the spine, what we're going to do is create a little pocket in between the pages like so. So then we can slot that over our spine later on. So I'm going to just expose a little bit just by folding my tape back. And I want this pocket, the folded edge of the pocket, to my left. Now I'm just going to line up this page with the flaps facing me on top. Hold them down. And now I can just peel off that tape. And now it's stuck down. So by only exposing a little bit, all of this, if it wasn't in the right place, I would have been able to move it easier. Whereas if I'd taken it all off, I've only got that one chance. So now we've got our pouch with two flaps here and a pocket here. So the reason we had it like that rather than like that is if that's in your album and you're, at, you're opening up your album this way, everything would fall out here which I have done, I did one of the pages um, in my example, uh, my first prototype back to front, but there is a way we can um, salvage it, which I'll show you later on. So there we have it, one page done, and I've got page two, three, and four here, all in different states of finishing. Oh, this is the mistake one, which I'm gonna show you later on. So let's start decorating. So let's grab the first piece of paper. So here we go. We're going to grab our trimmer. And I'm going to cut my paper to six inches wide. So get rid of the white on two sides and then cut it at six. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to have our continuation of our pattern all the way up our page when our flaps are open. So our flaps are one and a half inches, which means to mat it, I need one and a quarter. If you remember, I just do a quarter of an inch less. So that's my bottom flap. So now I need my main piece, I'm going to have to turn it around. And my page is eight and a half, so I'm going to go to eight and a quarter. So that'll go then to cover the middle piece. And then the top again at one and a quarter. So there we have our three pieces, but we gave our page a little rounded corner. So I used the large 10 millimeter one first, so now I'm gonna go down to seven. So I'm gonna do the tops of this one. And the bottoms of this one. Bring back my distress ink again. Just give, get rid of that white edge. And and then the top one. I know this isn't the most exciting thing to watch, but I think it is quite an important part of the process to see and to do because it really does finish off your project nicely. So let's glue this on. Now I'm going to be showing you a tied method for closing it with a tie closure using string. But what you could do 
is you could add some magnets here to keep them shut but I didn't think it'd be strong enough and I wanted to add more interest as well to my pages so that's why I've gone for the other ties but if you wanted to add some magnets at any point remember to do so before you attach your paper the centerpiece and the bottom and there we go so now I'm going to leave those for a second and you'll see why in a moment. And I'm actually going to decorate now the back. And you can see I've actually decorated it on the wrong side. I had it upside down. So I could either go back now and peel it or I'll show you the fixer on this one now. <laughs> so usually I would have had the pocket that way. That's just typical, isn't it? But don't worry, that gives me an opportunity to show you that fixing moment now. So what we've got now is this is the back of the first page and the front of the second. So I want the back of that and the front of this to match. And for this one, I'm actually going to use the same paper. Now, when we go to number two, we've got the same paper there. And then we've got some coordinating paper for the back of three and the front of four. You can see I've finished those ones already. So the reason I'm doing this before I do those two is because the waste from this is actually going to be what I use for here. So let's grab our trimmer. I oh, see that was just typical. I think it was because I turned it around to show you how not to do it. And I ended up leaving it that way, didn't I? Okay, six inches. And funnily enough, it's going to be exactly the same as we did for the front. We're going to do one and a quarter, then eight and a quarter, and another one and a quarter. So exactly the same measurements as before, but now this time you're going to cut your pocket bit from this piece. Now normally I would do it at one and three quarters here, but because I've actually done upside down, I'm going to have to turn my paper upside down. I'm going straight through the Queen of Hearts, not the end of the world. Okay, so let's bring back page one and two. So I said, normally it will be that way round for you, okay? Don't follow my mistake. So let's just... ink up this one. That's just typical. I did one the wrong way to show you. And I didn't need to because I'm actually going to show you the wrong way now. Okay. So let's glue them down. And you lift your pocket, so you tuck your paper inside and then place it down. And then place that one there. So you can see why I tell you not to do it this way around is when the page opens, everything's going to fall out. But because this kit comes with so many other things, I thought this was clever. For those who hate fussy cutting, there's actually a bleed line around it. So when you cut it out, it's much easier. So you could cut one of these out or 
just for speed. We've got some square ones, some nice fancy shaped ones. What you're gonna do is try and find an image they like. So let's, because we've got the Queen of Hearts there, let's use that one. So this is the fix if you've done the same mistake as me. Normally you wouldn't even have to do this and you would just use these as your decorations. So were you all shouting at me saying you've turned it upside down? Oh, those are the journal pages again, some more journal pages. How amazing are those images? I am going to show you another project using them. So what I can do now is I can glue just the right hand side. And place it. I, do I want it there so they're next to each other? Let's bring it down a bit. Just so they're not right next to each other. So now. If you've got something inside. photo mat is it so to make a six by four photo mat this isn't part of the tutorial i'm just doing something so i can show you so six by four photo mat i'm going to do a quarter of an inch bigger so four and a quarter by six and a quarter so that would i'd be able to put a photo onto that now so now i could lift that so I can put it in and when I lift my page this flappy bit will just stop everything falling out so if you do do a mistake like I have that's a nice way to correct it so now if you remember we cut off the top and bottom of these from there these are now going to make the top and bottom of our flaps so my page one ones are actually going on to page two Oh, so that's the top one. So I've got to do it on this side. And glue them. So you can see we've really made the most of our paper here by using the waste of the left page to finish off the right hand page. And the same, the waste from the top there, you probably won't tell, but it is the waste from there because it's the same sort of pattern. So this is the plain A4 page. This is the one with the tea time in the middle. I'm gonna show you how to make that later on. And then the waste from the top the, the clock came from that side for page four. So then the back of page four, I have this letter one. So what I'm going to do is take the waste from the last one, which I saved, and I've made it for page one. That's only if you, if you want to do it any other way, go ahead. That's just the way I've done it, just to save my paper so I don't need to print off another sheet. There's one and two. So that's now we've got page one, two, three, and four all ready to go. Now I'm going to show you two. Closure. So I haven't done the closure in one and two because I was decorating now. 
But number three, I've done a lot of zigzags with my cord. And number four has just got a single one. So I just thought I'd show you both just so you've got a bit of options. So that's all they are, are circles with a hole in them. But Cool Cats, um, which I'll link in the description below, they've just brought out some dies which cut circles and they cut a tiny hole in the middle and it cuts out six at a time. So really time effective little dies in three sizes. So these will mat onto these and then these will mat onto these. So you could mat three times if you wanted, but I'm just doing two. So here's the black one. So I cut the biggest one in black and then I've cut a smaller one out of the scraps of my decorative paper. So let me just take some black soot around the outside. Now cutting six at a time means that I've got enough then to make my closure. So I've made one, two, three, four, five of them already. So I just need to make one more. So two of them makes one closure, but because I'm doing, so, so this would be six, three there and three there. So I need them in pairs. So each time I send this through, I'm making a pair of my folio closures. So I need another one for this guy. So let's have a look. So when you die cut, you get this little bevel. So this is the front. The back has sort of got a little raised edge. So what I'm gonna do, this is the back. Take my glue around the edge. Take another one with my bevel up. So the correct size up. And when I put them together, you get a nice finish with a little bit of extra thickness. But again, if you've just cut circle punch with a hole in the middle, you can do that as well. Then the decorative paper will go on top and I'm just lining up the hole. There we are. So that's now given me a double thickness. I'm gonna take my little black brad, place it through the middle. Then take my third black one and place it through just loose like that. So what that's done is given me a little gap in between. So I can take my bone folder and I can just create that little gap. They just stretch them apart. So get your finger in and just stretch them or separate them apart. So that is actually where your string is going to go. So just, I'm just sort of training my card to separate a little bit. There we go. So now I'm just going to grab some of my double-sided tape. Let's turn them over. And I'm going to just cut some little squares. And that's just going to help them to stay in place for the glue to have a chance to grab. I think this is a bit. Panic then, didn't know where my sixth one was. There he is. So we've got some tape on the back. So let's bring back number one. And I'm just going to grab my ruler. 
Now my paper, not my cardstock, my paper was six inches wide. So if I line the edge of my ruler with my zero with the paper, I can then place my first one right in the middle at three inches. There we go. So it's number one. And now get into that gap and make that contact. And then left and right is up to you, but I'm just gonna, so I lined up the middle of that circle with the three. I'll line up this one with a five and this one with a one. So it's one inch on each side then. Just nice easy numbers for me to remember really. Five and one. So you want to give that a chance to dry. And again now, we're gonna do the same on the bottom. Line it up with the paper, number three. Now, if I went through that bit fast, don't worry, I'm gonna do it again with the next one for page number two, and they're gonna be bigger, so you'll be able to, I'll take my time. Cause I'll be able to show you a little bit better with the bigger circles. Five, three, and one. Okay. So this is a great closure as well. If you've forgotten to put your magnets or a closure on, you can come back and this can be done on top of your papers. Right, so let's put number one to the side. Let's bring in page number two. So these are the folio circles by the Cool Cats. But they've also brought out some perfect circles. <laughs> so you've got a variety of circles and some of them have got the dots. And as you can see, they are much bigger. But you only get two of each, so you've got to do a little bit more cutting. So for each page, you will need six of the larger ones. One, two, three. And I've already done one, so it's three there. And two of the decorative paper, which is the next one down. So if I put my dies to the side, I've already taken my Distress Ink around the edge and I'm just going to glue this. If I bring up this die, which was getting in focus, you'll see how one side has got that sort of ridge, but that's got the smooth bevel. So that's the top. I'm just placing it with that hole in line. So turn it over. So this is the wrong side now. And I'm gonna take with the glue, not too much. And I'm gonna take my second one, correct size up and place it on top. Line it up. Roll it around and just squeeze it between my fingers, like so. So that, then, find my brads. Here we are. So this now is my brad. It's going to go through the hole. And then through the next one. So I've got the correct size side up. And then just separate. And I've just done exactly the same here. So I can get my bone folder in here because I want to get my tape in there later, uh, string in there later. Let's just open it up. Let's get some double-sided tape. So I said, this tape is just keeping it in place for now, but it's the glue that will keep it there permanently. So this, I usually do it, this then across all my pages at the end, 
because whilst I'm doing this one, it's giving the other page a chance to dry. So again, putting in the middle at the three inch mark. Turn over so you can see. And again, The circle at three inches. Just let me get my bone folder in there. Great. So now I'm going to set that off to dry and bring back number one. So the string I'm using is just a one mil, a wax thread. So I just find the wax is really good because it's giving you that extra lubrication. and add some stiffness to your cord. So I'm just gonna tie it for the corset one. So call this a corset, because it looks like a laced up corset. Just take my scissors and cut off the excess. So the way I do mine is from the top, around this one, then diagonal up to this one. So you can see by taking my bone fold in between, it's just helped make those gaps so I can just go straight in. So make sure you're not trying to get in underneath if it hasn't dried. Get in between the two card, four pieces, around that way, and over the top. And then however much length you want. Then I've just taken a piece of black which I've die cut a circle with and then just another circle a bit smaller with my decorative paper just to get a little black border. Oh I've already put the tape behind that one. Let me put this on the next one ready then. Take off the back in. Place my cord onto that double-sided tape, and now, so these are just plain circles now. And that's my string cord end done. So you can see how now we've got that corset uh, look with the string, which I think looks quite nice. Equally, here we go with this one. With this one, it's up to you if you want to do the top or bottom first. I do the bottom and then I work, if it's just one I'm putting on, I work in a three. So I'm just tying it up around twice, getting the string in there. And then I work up down, up, and then over. So here's one. So what I would then do is put that on the edge, but I think I might have dropped the other one that I already had. So I'll add that on, oh, here we are. There we go. It's annoying when you've got a piece you know you've already done and you lose it. The amount of times I've redone one and then found it straight afterwards. And there we go, page two. So we've got page one, page two, page three, and page four. So I've alternated corset, plain, corset, plain. But up to you, if you want to do all corsets, Fine, if you want to do all, just singles, fine. Okay. So let's now put my lid on my ink before it dries. Let's bring back our cover. And I'm going to start with page four. I'm going to place tape down each of my spines. When I 
find it in that. So in that half inch score line we did, we're just going to run our strong tape. You do want your strong tape here. Now, if you were watching my spine one very carefully, I said, if you go back a hair's breadth, it'll help you. This is where it'll help you. Because if you've gone back that hair's breadth, then that will just be slightly smaller than our pocket page. So when you slide it on, let me take this low tack tape off. There you go. If you've gone slightly less, then you've just got a little tiny bit of wiggle room to get that in. Like so. But what will help you as well is if you take your scissors and cut a little notch towards that score line, that will now help you slide on even easier. Okay, so let me come closer to the camera. What I'm doing, you can see that half inch score line there. I'm going from the edge of my card cutting off. Just cut in towards that score line on all the top ones. And now just turn it over. Let's do the bottom ones. Okay. So now our spine is all prepared. Let me just burnish down the Tape. So I'm only putting tape on one side because it just helps me um, to be able to move a little bit more. If I had tape on the bottom as well, as I slide it on, it's going to stick as it goes in. So what I'm going to do is just run some glue down the back just to seal it. So nothing falls out the other side. We're just going to take our pocket page. I'm opening it up. I'm sliding it on making it look really tricky today there we go there, let's just get it up in the air there we are do you know I'm just going to take the tape off rather than fiddle What is catching today? I had some glue from earlier in there. There we are. Perfect. So now I'm just lining it up with the top and bottom of my album here. So I'm lining up there and now I'm squeezing down to make that contact. So just give me a little bit of wiggle time. Let's just go for it now. So that's number one, uh, number four. So now we want page number Lining it up with the page underneath. So I'm going to turn it side on. This is how I would normally do it if I wasn't on camera. So that's how I'm going to do it now. There we are. Much easier. Seal it. So now we're going to move on to number three. Page two, Let's take that tape off. And let's open it up. Take that 
it away, sliding it over. And then just one more to go. Page number one, the one I did wrong. Let's just slide it on. And there we go. So now we have our album complete. So we've got our pages, and because we've got that double hinge, it all lies flatter. So we haven't got everything just sticking up like that. It all lies flat. We can use the cords then to open up, and each of these then is like. A wallet. So let's have a look at what comes in the kit. So we've got these journal pages and these journal pages are great as photo mats or photo wallets because all you got to do is cut them out, score down the middle and here's one I prepared earlier, just cut out and scored down the middle Then just took my black soot just around the edge of the front and back. So what you can do now is these can go, let me not go for the wrong one, inside your pocket. They can go in there, but also these were designed, actually let me go get the one which has just got a single one, it'll just be a little bit quicker, won't it? These policy type placements was perfect just to put them on, place it in, and just putting in your journal page. So that was a little fab idea. Or what you can make is a little photo wallet to put them in. So I will show you how to make one of these. They're a little bit thicker, so they're perfect to go into here because you can slide that bit in there and just have that bit hanging loose so it's kind of making a flap which you can pull out and store your photos in there so let's make one of these now because it's going inside one of my albums i'm using a bit of a thinner weight i think this is a 160 rather than a 220 so it's an a4 piece and that's all i'm doing is I'm scoring it at five and three eighths. So five and one, two, three. See, I'm very technical there. Five and three eighths. Just go to five and count three across. And then at 10 and three quarters. So we've got that little bit left over, which is what we want. Let's bring in my Teflon tool again, and I'm just scoring it. Uh, not scoring, I'm burnishing it down, and then burnishing it down here as well. Then I'm just going to add some glue here and here. So you see, no cutting, no trimming, just two score lines, and done. And then you just take. your journal page trim off the white now this is one of the ones like I said at the start um, I printed this with the fit to page turned off so when I clicked it off I didn't lose a bit off the top and bottom if it fitted a page it would have stretched the left and right 
out and made the top bigger, which had gone off my page, which I didn't want. So, yeah, so I took it off. Then I'm just going to fold it in half and just, just crease a little bit there. That's my halfway point. Bring in my trimmer. There's halfway. There we are. So I'm going to put this on the front. Just get that black border. And then you could decorate the inside as well. Just if you're going to do that, remember, you're going to trim a bit off to mat that and then glue it because you're not going to get that in now because of the glue. So I just used it on the back. I just realized I haven't gone around with the black soot on this one. Let's just go around. I haven't been as careful as I normally would there. There we go. So that now has made you a little photo wallet. So now these photo wallets, you take off the measurements, there we go, are perfect for going into here, underneath those flaps, but also you can actually slide them in to the pocket page. So if you made four of these, you can just fill in there and then you've got room for photos here, you've got room for photos here, you've got room for photos in here. You've got loads of spaces for your memories. And just to show you what else you could be using, in the journal kits, you get these little folio bits. So you could just cut one of those out. You've got a score line down the middle, fold in half. Now those would be good tucked in behind these corset pages. There's also one, I think I've forgotten to print it out though, which has got an envelope. If you like small little photos, you could use these small little journal cards to make exactly the same as we did earlier. You know, just the single ones where you can just drop your photos in and they slide in there. But just a smaller one or tucked in there. Or that would be where you're going to tuck it underneath there and in there. Is that going to work? It's not. But if you had your smaller photos, that's where, oh, hang on, there we are. That flap does uh, fold. So even though it's a mistake, it still works. <laughs> and all our little closures, all from our little scraps going in. And our photo wallets. So I said with the DigiKit, we've been able to resize. We've been able to print just the ones we want these um, junk journal or your journal pages are fab for your photo wallets. So you can see it breaks up the colors there. Let me just tuck it in, keep that flap up. Otherwise it gets too thick. See, it just breaks it up, doesn't it? So there we go. These, there's your photo album. And once you've made two of them, you can then grab your magazine box. So this is one without the white rabbit. We can drop them both in like that. You can see how they fit. And then 
our lid will just go on top. So I might just have to do it sideways just to show it because, yeah, it is quite a large project. Maybe that you can just see the corners of your albums. They then come out and you've got your magazine. So as I said in the box one, if you just wanted to make the one box, it's just going to tuck in like that and you can just have that as its own project. I maybe put the white rabbit onto this one instead. But the reason I didn't do that was I would have cut off his ears, which I didn't want to do. Okay, so there's our main project made, our magazine box with two uh, memory albums to fit inside. So I've already made the big box project and the albums. So I thought what I'd do is make a little bonus project as well. So this is like a little extra tag on for you because in the kits, if you go over to their YouTube channel, Victoria Designs, you'll see a lot of their more junk journal and more vintage and shabby chic type things, making use of these pages, the journal pages. So I wanted to turn these and make a project more in my style. So what I've come up with is this perpetual album. So I've used one of the papers on the front and then you've got a booklet that opens up like that. Loads of amazing designs and room then for your six by four photos on each page. But what makes it a bit more interesting then is when you untie the ribbons, they're not actually just decorative. When you untie them, the album will also open up the other way, revealing even more of those journal pages. And it's perpetual, it's like a never ending, so you can just go back the other way. Or, you can open it out and have all the pages on display or even stand it up and have a display like that or a zigzag any way you want. So it's a nice little fun, extra little idea. So how do I make it? Well, first of all, I printed off the journal pages. Now what's important with this now is that you choose the ones which haven't got the little text underneath. There's some which have a description underneath and some which don't. These are the ones that don't, so they're bigger. They'll fill more of your page. And when you print it, that you click the fit to page off. You don't want the fit to page because that'll stretch it to the side and you lose the top and bottom. So I got rid of fit to page and chose the bigger papers. Now what you want to do is you want to choose seven or more. As long as you do an odd number, you want to do seven or more of these. Then choose one extra for your cover. Okay, so this will work if you've got an odd number of pages. So that's all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut. Now I'm cutting rather than trimming because I want it to be a bit more accurate. Because you want all your pages to be the same size. And if I want them trimming, uh, white edges off, I don't always get it spot on. And if I trim a bit too much off, I'd have to trim off each one. So I find for this cutting or using your uh, ruler of a knife is probably your preferred options for this. Before I do anything else, I really need to show you 
how these images look. Okay, so I'm printing onto my ICE, my 190 GSM cardstock. And you can see the quality of the print here. So you don't want it to be too thin a paper. You want it to have some substance to it. So that's why I went for my thicker ice papers this time. So I'm gonna bring in my scoreboard, but it's a very unusual um, size. So I don't bother with that. What I'm doing is using the scoreboard to fold it in half like this. So I'm just using the scoreboard to line up. So, and then I'm just gently working that fold. Now I've got it, so I'm going to press that down. So I'm just using my scoreboard as a guide rather than for scoring, just to fold it in half. Now I'm using my Teflon tool to get a nice sharp crease. And I'm going to bring in my Distress Ink. Now usually I say this is just a finishing touch and optional, but this time I really do recommend you do this because when we come to add our paper, it will hide any um, miscuts or a bit of different size because the black edge won't show. So I'm actually doing the back here. And I'm doing all the way around all four. And I'm not being stingy here with my ink. I'm refilling quite often because I want it nice and dark. And I'm going to do the other side as well. And the reason for to doing this will become clear when I start putting my book together. Okay. So you can see I've done both sides and I'm making sure I've got it down the spine because you are going to see that later on. So I'm making sure the spine part is nice and dark. I'll just finish off. Let's go around the edge of the inside as well, the coloured side. The last bit. Brilliant. So there we have our pages. And as I said, you're going to need seven of them. So I suppose you don't want to see me inking all seven. So I've already done one, two, three, four, five, six ready. So you want a minimum of seven so your cover doesn't catch. But as long as you go up now, adding in twos, you could go nine, 11, however much you want. So here we go. All these amazing designs. And believe me, I haven't used half the designs here. So those are my pages. And there was another one that I've cut out ready. And I thought this was lovely for the cover because you've got the Alice Wonderland Adventures with the image. It actually did look like a book cover. But this one, I'm gonna fold in half. And I'm just going to score, uh, sorry, to score to fold one corner just to get the halfway point. And I'm going to trim this in half. Yeah. And again, just going to ink the edges so that it just ties in with the rest of the project, but I'm not doing the back this time. This is just the cover. Okay. Get some more ink. So I'm just getting rid of that white core edge because it will show up on the uh, black cover later on. Okay, 
So we have our pages done. We have our two covers done. So now we just need some chipboard. So again, same as I used for the box in the album. It's just one and a half mil chipboard. And I've cut it at five and three eighths by eight and a quarter. Now that is A4. So I got both of them out of the one A4 sheet. And it's up to you now how you want to cover it. You could use the cardstock method where you just put on card, trim, cover. But I like my um, frame tape from Cool Cats. So it's just a papery um, paper tape, which was used in framing, I believe, framing photographs and things. So it's perfect for craft projects because it's going to be safe around your papers and your photos. So I'm just going to place it onto my tape. And if you've seen the other album, uh, other videos, you will see how you just take your tape, keep just stretching it, placing it down. And again, and cutting it off. And then just taking a sharp pair of scissors and I'm cutting a V-shape out of the tape towards the corner of my grey board. So just cut a triangle away. So it's sort of mitering there. I'm just working around all four sides. Flip it over. And there's a couple more to go. So this just sort of neatens up our edges our grey board and just pinching it over then start in the middle making contact all the way so again brush it onto the edge just so sort of taking a pinch just to get it over the edge of the grey board and then take it down onto the main front so I'm just sort of working it over that edge, pinching it on, and then squeezing it out. And again, making the contact over the edge, nice crisp edge, then start in the middle and work out, especially with the longer edges. And if you find you've got a little couple of bumps, you just take your Teflon tool, your bone folder, and you smooth it all down. And again, just do it on the other one. So, oh, let's get it more centered. Up. And again, try to be a little bit quicker this time. I'm just taking off the eight corners, four on this side, four on the other. I 
I just find this a bit quicker than the uh, paper method, uh, just covering with a black paper or black cardstock. And as well, the tape is, is cheaper than using all that double sided um, tape as well. Okay, so just press the frame tape over. And get rid of all those creases, not too bad this time. Excellent, so now we've got our two covers. But before I attach my papers to it, I wanna want to add my ribbon. So let's have a look. So let's cut it. Let's see what sort of size did I have last time? This seemed to be a good length. So 16. So if I cut them at 25 centimeters, I'll have enough to go inside. So let's have a look. So six inches or, yeah, let's go six in, uh, sorry, nine inches. That might be easier to keep the inches. So nine inches, but it depends how long you want it really. You just want enough to um, tie on the end. And if it's frayed, don't worry. I've got tricks to hide that later on. And you can have four or you can have six, whatever you want. Let's go six today then. And you can see I'm just roughly chopping them at nine. Okay. So I'm gonna bring in my ruler and I'm going to just use my ruler thickness. So I've lined both my covers the same, and I'm just gonna draw a line. I'm gonna bring it down the bottom, and I'm just gonna draw a line across there too. And then let's have a look where the center is. So we're at eight and a quarter, so that's four and an eighth. So if I mark a four, I mark at four and a quarter. That might be a better way of doing it. I'll explain why afterwards. Four and four and a quarter. So what we're gonna do, that's the center that's where my ribbon is going to go. So here, our ribbon is going to go down from that line, and here it's going to go above the line. So some nice, strong tape. This is the Cool Cats um, Sticky Paws. And I'm going to go below that line, between those two, and on the edge. And on this one now, I'll want them to be on this side. So beneath that one, in between those two, and above this one. Let me just add a little bit more there. Okay. So let's have a look. Let's take off some tape. And I just want enough that I can tie my knots later on. So now I'm looking here to my left to try and get sort of the same distance. And stick it down. And the third one. This is lining it up above. And now 
actually, I could have just done them like that, can I? Let's take off these ones. And I'll just line them up. up. One. Two. And three. So when I flip them over, they're going to match. So that's our ribbons attached. Let's bring in those two pieces I did for the cover. Let's just cover those ribbons. So I'm going to make sure I'm getting it adhered around those ribbons. So just adding some extra glue around there. And on this now, I'm just making sure I've got glue. All around. Move the one from underneath away. So we're sticking onto the ribbon here. So you want some nice thin ribbon. Otherwise you're gonna get lots of bumps here. So I just got some thin satin here. I think I used some more guns on the original one. So that's the first one. So we want the smooth bits meeting. So this will be the back. Make sure I'm the right way around. So just make sure it keeps that ribbon in place. And so look, get keys to the right hand side. Those are my cover pieces ready to set them aside. Let's bring our pages in. So have a think now how you want your pages to look. When you open your book first, which one do you want to see? So I think I'm going to start with this one because the Alice will tell us um, what the theme is. So your Alice one is going to be the first book, uh, page as you open it like that. So I'm going to open it up and close it off to the left. Now my second page, so the fold is on my right. The next page now I'm going to put like so to form a zigzag with my spine onto the right. So now you'll see why I ink those edges black the, uh, the spine bits because when you glue them together you're actually going to see so that black will just give you a nice finish so now I'm just going to take my page and I'm going to line it up onto my first page now this second one the one I'm putting on top you will not see this in um, the regular open. So here's the first page we've chosen. Now the one we've just stuck is actually behind there. So when you open it up, it's actually keeping these two pages together there. So number one, you will see. Number two, you won't. Number three, you will see in the original opening. So I'm going to have, let's have a look, we've got a red so do I want another red no let's go uh, turquoise so my spine was on my left this time so now it's going to be on my right so just keep alternating your spine but where that fold is so again I'm lining it up So we've got red. Now, this had a green one, so purple would be 
spine here. Oh, let's go red, let's go quite a few reds. So this time the spine is gonna to go to my left. So I need to ink this side. So it's lifting it up. Now, if you find lining up tricky, what you can do is bring your scoreboard back in and build it in that corner there. But just be aware, with scoreboards, it comes up and then tilts back. So if the higher up you come, it's actually tilting back towards the top there. So your papers would gradually start going that way. So just use the left-hand side to line things up if you're not confident. Right, I forgot where I am. So page one, page two. So now we're moving on to page three. I think I, now I'm gonna use that purple. Oh, which side do I want now? So the spine's here, so now I want it like that. And I had a red one, so let's try and avoid the red. Let's go for the black then. And I want spine that side, so let's... And you get an idea now of how the book builds up and how it all works. And the last one is going to go that way. So let's just put the ink, uh, glue on this bit this time. So I've just kept going until I've used up all my papers. So here we go. You can see now why I inked those spines of the pages so well at the beginning. It was worth doing because it does hide. In the original one, I didn't. And you can see how the white really shows up. So I, I did test it on the last one and I liked how it looked. So you can see that's a much better finish. So this is the back. So let's bring in the back. Here we go, and lay it down. Now, just so that it stays in place, I'm gonna put some tape down. Just some of my strong score tape or the sticky pause tape. I'm gonna flip it over. Now the chipboard bit is a little bit bigger than our pages just to give a nice little black border so that's why you want seven pages at least otherwise the overlap will hit each other as you open your book so if you line up in the center and take it a little bit closer to the left hand side where the ribbons are there you go That'll just mean you've got less overlap of the chipboard on the left, which will help with the book opening. So again, added some tape just so it sticks straight away so we can carry on with our project. But the glue is what will keep it in place permanently. So now what I'm going to do is line this up with the chipboard underneath. 
So I'm bringing my head or oh, straight over, placing it down, checking. Yep, it's nice and even. Happy to squeeze down. So that's your perpetual album. Then you can see if you didn't, if you had less than seven as you opened it, these two bits would hit there. So that's why you want a minimum of seven. So let's just finish off with these ribbon ends. So what I've done, I've just taken some die cut or hole punch and done a load of dots, uh, black circles, and some of the paper leftovers from when I did my album and my box. I got way too much here, I know. So let's have a look which ones will. I'm gonna just blacken the six I want. I was on six, I went 12, didn't I? So by using the offcuts from the album, I know it's going to tie in with all the papers in those journal pages. But in the kit as well, they've actually got some of the journal pages, but mini versions. So you get like two on one page. So if you wanted to make a tiny version of this, you really could. So all you'd want to do is print off one of your pages, make your uh, chipboard page just slightly bigger and use the same method. So you can make small ones or this size. So if you wanted to do an even more elaborate finish, what you can do is take some um, glossy accents or something similar and colour in each of these as well. And that will give you like an enamel ribbon end. Almost done. Uh, one more. There we go. So now it's just a case of attaching to our ribbon. So I like to get a little bit of tape onto the backs, just so it holds the ribbon in place while the glue has time to attach. So I'm just gonna attach some ribbon to the backs of these. Uh, some double-sided tape. Again, this is my strong score tape or sticky pause tape. And then just case off. Take it off, place your ribbon on top, take off the next one ready, and attach the glue. Next to Take my Teflon tool just to get the glue to attach all the way around. And there we have it. Your ribbon ends, just enough for you to tie loosely a little knot. 
on the end on all three. I know some people like decorating their ribbon ends and stuff, so go for it. Be creative, that's your opportunity to be creative. And there we have our perpetual album using the Victoria Designs uh, journal pages. And if you head over to their YouTube page, there's links there to their shop and things, you will find a whole host of different journal kits available. So you can make a dragon one, there's mermaids, there's magical themes, loads of different ones. And this little quick little album or book can be made using any of those kits. Then just untie and you'd be able to open up the other way as well or just stand up like that if it's kept tied. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the project. I know it's quite a long one, but I think it's worth it. You've got quite a substantial project in the end. So if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button and click those thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It really means a lot to me. Please leave me comments as well. Tell me what you think. And I'll see you all again really soon with some more fun, exciting projects.